Oh. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Well, it doesn't appear to be working. Let me check over here. Oh, there I am. I'm just actually checking what's going on here. Uh, hi everyone guys, I, I wanted to actually, just let me turn down my phone so I can't hear that. Um, basically what I wanted to talk to you today is about a uh, issue that I just read about in our Herald Sun. Now our Herald Sun is our major newspaper here uh, in Australia and I've noticed there's two articles today talking about um, this uh, Sony camera that this guy actually um, bought. So I wanted to sort of talk to you about it. Now, I use Sony and I did change from Nikon to Sony, but I have basically, I would change tomorrow if, if a better system came up. I'm not linked to Sony. I'm certainly not a fanboy, although I do love what their cameras are giving me at the moment. But if something better came along, uh, I would switch again. Really, I'm just in this to give the best things to my clients. So, you know, I'm not going to hide anything. And I thought I might bring this up and I thought really where it's a fail by Sony. Um, treating a customer the way that they have so i just thought that i'd show you this article and um, you can sort of give me some opinions yourself uh, to see what's actually happening just let me open up live chat see if we can get anyone in um, i hope you can hear me all right so is, is everything good so it sounds okay now I've got a few now come in, so uh, I'll just see that it is sounding okay. I had to turn my sound down um, because um, it's, it's distorting. So, so just give me a message below if you can hear me okay. I think you can. Uh, I've got a couple watching now. Yeah, it sounds fine. Okay, cool. All right, so this, this um, article that I just got down today, I read it in the sun and I've now downloaded it digital so I can go through with you all. What it's actually saying is uh, there was this person, um, I think if we scroll down, uh, his name actually is, um, what's his name? Jason Fardoulis. Now, he's bought this camera apparently in Dubai in 2015, so I'd say it's probably the A7R II uh, being that price, I think. Um, but what he's saying is that he's had it in for five separate occasions to get fixed, and he's had problems with it every single time that it's come back. And I'll play you this clip that you can look at that he's put on of the camera's, uh, what's happening to it, so I'll play it now. Um, so you can see he's just about to turn it on and then basically it looks like it's not really doing anything so this video goes for a couple of minutes but basically all that comes up the screen flashes a few times um, and it's not turning on now I'm not sure whether he's tried to get this fixed in Australia and then they're thinking well because it's been bought in Dubai that it's been an issue but Still, you'd think if he's paid to have it to get fixed or it's under warranty, it still should be fixed when you're dealing with, um, you know, a camera that's basically nearly $5,000. Um, so I'm not sure whether it is just a lemon. And um, yeah, Zoom Chris said definitely a lemon. He should have changed it after its second repair. It happens. Um, but the issue is what, what's actually gone on here is that he's actually said that Sony told him that after a certain range, it would then get fixed. Um, now it's been, like I said, it's been sent in five times to get fixed. Um, and it's come back with this problem every single time. And it, it says that um, Sony authorized it to actually be changed, but then they changed their mind uh, after that. Now, once this letter was published or this, this article was published in the Sun, then Sony have sent an, uh, a 
an email to say that they'll replace it. But what they were offering originally was to replace a camera, but then what they said they'd do is you had to buy other Sony gear with it. So they weren't giving you a new camera, they were basically just giving you some money to uh, buy other gear, which he wasn't interested in. So the Herald Sun got involved, and then naturally after that, uh, they've then said that the camera would be replaced um, as, a, as a refund. Um, I mean, the thing is, it's, it's not good enough by Sony. When we're trying to grow this market, and, and now that I am on board with Sony with what I'm shooting, I hope it does grow. This certainly doesn't help. Uh, this sort of article when it will be read by you know thousands and thousands of people uh, here in Australia so it certainly won't help Sony um, locally uh, when that happens I'm just going to read some of these comments too um, yeah saying it's a lemon um, oh, many faces said hi David love your work thanks mate that's uh, <laughs> that's really really nice of you to say that um, I am going to try to over the next uh, few weeks to start doing more of this online stuff and I might start to show my workflow and things like that that so it will be different than what I've put on so far but I thought I'd talk about this today as, as I just read it um, so obviously now all these people are bagging Sony here if you read the comments that were online I'm not sure if this will go down to comments yeah it will so let's have a look um, Basically, everyone's saying that, like these sort of comments, does anyone actually still buy Sony cameras? Now, we'll, I'm not going to get into these comments because most of them are just ridiculous. I mean, these people that say no one, no professionals use Sony is just outlandish. I mean, you, you've only got to look at heaps of people's work and you can see it's used professionally. But it's just, it's just damaging because it says, I think everyone knows that for a pro-level camera, you go Nikon or Canon. A sad story for sure, but there's reasons those other brands are so dominant in the marketplace. I don't know why these big companies don't just replace lemons rather than cost themselves so much more in bad publicity. And that's, that's the bad thing about this. They've given themselves so much bad publicity, it really should have been changed after the second time it was put in uh, to be repaired. Um, let's see, let's see what people say. Uh, Pretty much recognised around the world, Sony make great products, but their after-sales support is appalling. See, so again, it's talking about their after-sales service is appalling. Um, now, admittedly here, they've just released Pro Services here in Australia, and I've used it twice, and actually I've been amazed by it, and it's been fantastic. Um, but I haven't had a camera that's played up two or three times where I've need to get it replaced. It's had a problem, they fixed it within a week or something, and then I've got it back and it's worked. But I don't know what will happen now if, if if it breaks down a number of times, are they going to replace it or am I going to have to go through this same problem of you know having it break down five times and then only replacing it because I've complained to the media? It's not good enough, Sony. Um, let's, have, let's, let's have a look. It's pretty much recognised around the world. Um, they're great products, but the sales is appalling. Check out any professional photography feedback on the web and you'll notice that Sony uh, came out the other day affirming how important the pro market is so hopefully they'll fix it uh, let's have a look no wonder sony's popularity is in decline there's another comment that's in here you know i mean it's it's, it's just bad sony like that never should have happened in the first place this sort of stuff when you're trying to grow in the marketplace uh should have been fixed straight away let's have a look down here um Zoom Chris said, Sony customer support is well known for being annoying. I'll just put up my phone so I'm not looking down so much. Um, anyway, bad luck. Doesn't mean that Sony cameras are all bad. Not a Sony uh, boy fan either. It's switched three brands in the last two years. James Russell said, I really believe there has to be more to this. Many cameras break and people have issues with other companies. Uh, but they don't seem to be in the news. And that, that's another thing. I, I really can't understand why the Herald Sun has published this because, I mean, it must happen all the time. I mean, does it happen with Canon? Does it happen with Nikon? But still, if this had happened to me with my business and someone had complained like this, I would do everything to fix it before it got to that stage. And for Sony to only say, originally say they were going to replace it, then to turn their back on that, and then to say they'll only now give a refund because the Herald Sun got involved, it's just, it's just bad. Um, 
uh, Zoom Chris said, I sent my Nick on D4S three times for service and they didn't figure it out, replaced it after two months of a struggle. Yeah, so I mean, it is interesting. I'm not sure whether if this had had Sony, uh, if this was bought in Australia, whether that would have made a difference because under Australian rules, we can get things fixed uh, with consumer affairs, we can get them involved, but because it was bought in Dubai, that may have been an issue as well. So I'm not actually quite sure uh, what's going on there. So, you know, it, it's it's just bad. But either way, I want Sony to grow because I've now gone into the Sony brand. So, and basically they are uh, an up and coming brand. So I don't want them to fall back and I don't want them to start to get all this bad publicity and sales start to fall, which puts prices up. Um, I'd really like them to grow and I just think they need to look at their customer service and they really should be looking after people, you know, and basically, if you have an issue like this, I don't understand what they were thinking there. They should have said after two times, look, we're just going to replace it. You're dealing with a $4,500 piece of equipment. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just bad. Um, Three Trees Photography said, I have Sony but haven't had to repair it yet. My Sony A7R2 is wearing well cosmetically. Um, the pleather material is peeling off and the screen is mocking around the edges. Yeah, I put screen guards on my all of my Sony cameras because I've seen quite a lot of uh, the displays at the back tend to have a peeling issue. Um, so I purchased off to e eBay, I think it was, I got screen protectors and even the ones that weren't the correct size, I just cut them down so I could put it over the back. Um, as for wear and tear, I found that they're, they're actually really very good. Um, and believe it or not, I've dropped my A7R three times on concrete and it's still working. I dropped my um, A7 II during a wedding. Uh, it was on one of the, um, I think it was a rapid strap which screws in at the bottom and it undid and it fell down on the ground. Uh, again, I was horrified, but it, it was fine. That had a 2470 lens on it and they were both fine. So uh, I was a bit worried about that. So they seem to be a bit stronger than what people give them credit for, but I have noticed that wear and tear on the back if you don't put that screen protector on. Um, Robert Shiro has said, part of the Sony issue is that warranties are done on a country basis rather than a worldwide one. Uh, and his next comment is, perhaps this was considered a grey market camera and not properly supported to begin with since the guy bought it in Dubai. Yeah, I do wonder about that, Robert, because um, I know, I'm not sure in Australia whether they will service under warranty if it's bought uh, overseas. I think it has to be bought here. And that's probably the same in the States as well. Um, I think you do actually have to buy it locally. Um, but still, if, if it was repaired in a, in a authorized service center, it, it should have been fixed. That must, I'm not sure whether, when they say authorized, I would think that that's who Sony have recommended it to be fixed through. Um, but we'll see if Sony answers this and uh, you know, it'll be interesting to, um, to get their opinion of it. Um, most, uh, so Three Trees Photography said, most positive notes, Sony has best sense of quality I've used in my career. And you know what, I agree. Um, I came from Nikon, I had the D4S, uh, the D810, and the D750, so I had the upmarket cameras. I didn't come from low-end cameras, I came from the high end of Nikon. Um, and I found when I changed over, to be honest, I didn't notice any difference in the sensor quality at all. So the, the recovery seems to be about the same as what I was used to from Nikon. Um, so I've found their sensors to be incredible. The only downside that I've actually found is the focusing is still not as good as what I was getting with my Nikon in low light. Um, but as long as you have uh, fast lenses, uh, you can get around that and it's, it's acceptable. Like when I'm doing receptions in low light, as long as I'm using say a 1.8 lens, something like that, the focusing is quite good. But if I was trying to use an f4 lens, I'd get into trouble. So that's one difference that there is with them. Um, Robert Chero said, also Dave, your announcements of this live cast said, never buy a Sony camera again. I thought this was your opinion, didn't know if it was about a news story. Um, yeah, it's actually about a news story. It's not my opinion, it's just the heading. If you look on this, um, heading it's saying here why I'll never buy another Sony product so that's the heading that came through the Sun um, it's not what I do uh, but it is what this headline actually uh, said um, 
We shouldn't be too reactive about these kind of stories. I get, uh, this is what Robert has said. I get great support from my distributor in the US. Um, I think I have too. I mean, I've, like I said, I've used the Sony camera support twice now, the pro support, and it's been great. So for me personally, it's been good. But headlines like this in our major newspaper, and this is our major newspaper here, cannot help Sony at all. Um, so it never should have got to this stage. It should have been replaced. Um, Studat said, I purchased Fuji X-T2 to replace my A6000 and it is nowhere near as good for stills. Yeah, I still look. Um, I've, been, I've been tempted to have a look at the X-T2, the Fuji one, but only because I'm, I'm a bit of a, a technology geek and I'd like to have a look and play with one. So I may one day have a look at the Fuji. The main thing I think I like about Fuji is the way they use their firmware and they will give extra features uh, with their firmware. And they did that the other day with the latest firmware that released it added about 30 features to their cameras sony will not do that it really annoys me sometimes i just wish that they would add more support and, and better firmware updates uh, when you're paying that much for a camera uh, the simple things that they could actually do to make the camera better um, they should be doing i know it's they they want people to buy a new camera but it's certainly not hurting fuji that they're releasing these uh, extra firmware with all these updates uh, it's not stopping their camera sales, so I think Sony should be doing something similar. What do you guys think? Um, we'll see what anyone else comes up with their tips. Uh, so I think most of you guys are probably from the US, so you already have pro support. I know we've just got pro support here um, in Australia, but I'm not sure about other countries, whether the other countries have that as well. Um, Stuart said, my A6500 is amazing. I know, look, I adore the A6500. That's what I'm filming now with for this. Um, I use it all the time now, and I've been using it uh, really quite extensively in all the weddings I've been doing. If you've been checking my um, wedding videos that have uh, just been published on YouTube, um, the three to four minute ones are highlight videos. Most of those have been shot with the A6500. Um, so I'm really, really happy with it. Um, the, I mean, I'm on autofocus now. I don't know how it's going, whether it's breathing in and out, um, but it's it's just on autofocus now i'm also using the 24 um 1.8 lens on it which is fantastic uh i adore that lens it's giving me about a 35 mil view um it's fantastic it's a great combo um what else have we got coming up here studat says is, is a6500 is amazing selling the xt20 to buy back an a6000 uh, three trees photography. I use Canon 1DX for a few years, so using Sony AF has been challenging. Yeah, that look, that's the one thing that I hope um, they do improve. And I have noticed a difference between my D4S um, to the A7R2, for instance. Um, in good light, there's not a heap of difference, but it is still not quite as good for, for fast moving subjects and things like that. Uh, but that's only going to get better. Um, and I think you'll probably find the next versions that come out, the A7R4 or A9, whatever they want to call it, uh, will be much better again. So the A6500 is pretty good. I mean, I've found I can really follow things very fast with that, as long as it's in good light though, again, if, if it's low light, um, you know, if you're in a reception hall and it's very dimly lit, uh, they don't focus very well. So it's, it is a downside to the Sony system. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, it's definitely the down, the one negative, I think. Um, but, like I said, I've got around it, and I now know how to handle it. It's fast glass, and you do just have to be aware that it's just not as quick. Uh, but again, the advantages, of course, the size, um, the screen at the back, the um, viewfinder. I mean, I could go on a million things why I move from, from Nikon. Uh, I don't have a sore back anymore uh, when I'm shooting weddings because the weight is so much lighter. I am tending to shoot all primes, so that's made a difference. I'm not lugging around these massive big lenses. Um, I'm mostly using things like the Batis 85, the 55 1.8, the, the, this lens I'm using now on the camera, which is the 1.2, um, uh, sorry, the 1.8 24mm. Um, so I, I like the light lenses. I do still use the 70 to 200, but only if I want that compression. There, there has to be a reason for me to use um, that long, heavy lens um, because I have the 70 to 200 f4. I'm not going to buy the uh, the G Master because I just don't want that weight. Uh, and I've found 
if I need the uh, extra light gathering, I'll just use prime lenses. Um, Binu Babu, I think it's Babu, uh, says, Sony thinks like a consumer electrics company rather than a camera company where you support your regular pros and they buy into your system for life, which in the long term is the smart play. Yeah, look, I think that's probably true. They, they are still thinking a little bit like a, a uh, consumer electrics company. I think it's more like a throwaway policy of you just get rid of the cameras. That's why Fuji are updating their firmware all the time. Um, because they are thinking in the long term. And I think Sony needs to change that. I think Sony should think more like a camera company for cameras. They should be releasing better firmware that will give extra features. If they do that, people are really going to love the company and, and it'll make them want to buy more gear because they know it's going to be supported in the future. The, the problem is, really, there hasn't been much added extra to things like the A7Ts or the A7R2s in firmware. Uh, and they could really change it. I mean, they could be altering the menus, they could be doing all different things, but they just won't do it. And it is um, it is annoying, I have to be honest. I wish they'd think like Fuji. Um, Angela Thomas said, my A7R says it can't display image. Not sure what to do. It happens when I try to zoom in on my photo. Well, that's interesting. Oh, it sounds like there's a problem with that camera. I think you, it, so if you're playing it, if you actually go to press play, it can't find, it can't display the image. Uh, I think that's a hardware problem. Um, I'd be sending it off, Angela, because I've never had that problem. Um, Three Trees Photography said, love using the 55 with the A7R2. It's probably my favorite combo. I love it too. But you know what my favorite lens is? It's the 35 1.4. I adore the lens. Again, I have a love of the 35 millimeter size um, and it's it's just the the um, focal length that I tend to really really like looking uh, at and using. Um, so it's the 35 1.4 is probably my favorite lens. The next would be the baddest because I do a lot of portraits obviously. Um, but yeah. So anyone else have any questions? It's uh, been an interesting conversation. So I hope. I hope Sony answer this though. I hope they give their um, view on this that like someone said before that there may be more to this than what we're actually reading in the Herald Sun. Um, so I hope they answer, answer it. It's, it's just not a good look. Um, so Studat said the Sigma 30 1.4. No, I'm, well, that's, that's a really good lens apparently. I've tried to stay um, completely native with all my lens purchases. Um, so I'm only sticking with Sony because I found that they tend to focus faster. Um, I love things like eye focus and everything else. So I've, I've stuck with Sony. So I don't have any other um, lenses um, at this stage. It doesn't mean that I won't get other lenses. I mean, I'm tempted to, to get the new 135. I think that's a, uh, a Sigma, I think. Was it 135, 1.8? Um, I won't be getting the baddest 135. I think that's ridiculous the amount of money they're asking for that for um, an f2.8 lens. Um, but I'll have to see what that's like. I might test it and then have a look. Um, yeah, so that yeah, that's my favourite. Yes, so it is three trees photography. Uh, 35 1.4 is my favourite lens. So yeah, I just adore that lens. It's um, it's just amazing. Um, John Lambert said, is it worth upgrading from the 70 to 200 f4 to get the 2.8 version for weddings or just grab the 51.4 for low light? Well, like I said, I, I don't, I very rarely use my 70 to 200 f4 now. So I only use that occasionally when we go out for formals where, like I said, I'd need that compression where I want to bring the background in for some reason. Um, to be honest, I, I, it's just the way I'm shooting, so you have to make a decision yourself, but I, I personally love primes, but it's just the way that I've tended to go. I like the weight, I like the size that it brings. It's less intimidating for the bride and, and groom or, or model that you're shooting because you haven't got this massive, great big honking lens uh, sticking off the camera. Um, so it's, it's just me personally. So if I had the choice, like I said, I, I've got a full range of lenses, so I have the uh, 35 1.4 and I've got the 55 55 1.8 I've got the Zeiss Battis uh, 85 um, and then obviously I, I do have zooms as well I've got the 2470 um, f4 and I've got the 70 to 200 f4 I haven't got the G master lenses 
due to their weight. It's not the cost. That cost to me, that wouldn't matter because I'm a professional working weddings nearly every weekend. It's it's more the weight for me and it's more um, what I want to carry around that's the important thing for me. But you will have to make that decision. But you definitely need a faster lens than a uh, 2.8 because often if you're in a dark church or receptions, the 2.8 is not fast enough. Um, so you will need something that's around the 1.4, 1.8 uh, area. That's where the 35, 1.4 is so good. Um, I'll read some more of these um, comments. Uh, student says, I have the Zeiss 16 to 70. I see you have the 18 to 105. I hear it isn't that sharp. Um, I love the, I love the, um, the, um, which was the lens you asked? Oh yeah, the 18 to 105. You'll see a lot of the, sh uh, New Zealand shots that I just took had that lens. I can't understand why anyone would say it's not sharp. Have a look at the um, images that I've put from New Zealand and tell me it's not sharp. It is, it's really sharp. Um, look, sometimes pixel, people pixel peep. My clients don't pixel peep. They're, they're really happy with what I produce. They're not gonna tell the difference between, you know, like a, a, an 18 to 105 or a 55, uh, 1.8. They can't see that difference. Um, photographers can we tend to be the only ones that look for those sort of things so I'm happy enough with how sharp that is um, I do only use that though in weddings for video um, I'm using the, like I said the primes for when I'm doing photography um, so let me read some of these other ones um, I think the Sony 35 1.8 for your APS-C is a very underrated lens, especially for portraits. Yes, it is. I've used that lens and it actually is very good, but it gives you the 50 mil roughly. Uh, and again, it's 35 is my favorite. That's why I've gone for the 24 uh, 1.8 because that gives me that 35 millimeter focal length, but it is an underrated lens. Um, what else have people put? I don't do wedding with any adapters. Uh, they get fo uh, they get lost focusing too much. Yeah, that's why I'm not using adapters at all um, because you're putting something between the lens and the camera and I just don't want to do that. And also I don't want the weight either. That's adding extra weight. Uh, but I found that the native Sony lenses focus so much quicker. That's why I'm just sticking with native Sony lenses. Oh, and the Batis, which, but it's still a native lens. Um, Atom, Atom 10, I think it is. I have the original A7. I bought the Batis 85 and the rotor light based on a few of your videos. Still enjoying the rotor light. What are your thoughts on the new Godex 200? Um, I can't talk about the Godex 200 because I'm totally pro photo. Um, I'm, I'm going to actually show all my pro photo gear soon in a, in a video podcast because uh, in, on a YouTube video. So I want to show some of the attachments and things like that. And now that Sony have released or, or Profoto have released a Sony um, trigger for that, the Air Remote, it's, it's just taking it to another level. So I can't talk about the Godex, but I mean, I'm sure they're very, very good. Um, the Rotolite Neos I use all the time. Look, I use the Rotolite Neos and I also use the Ice Lights. I've got a few Rotolite Neos and a few Ice Lights as well. I've got three ice lights that I use. I tend to think the ice light is softer. Um, so if I'm doing really beautiful bridal shots, uh, I must show that actually, I'll, I'll show that one time on a YouTube video. But if I'm doing beautiful bride shots and things like that where I want very soft window light, I'll use the um, ice lights. I find they're much softer, uh, but you can't control color temperature and things with them. You have to put like a, uh, a foil over them or something if you want to convert them to tungsten or something like that. The Neos I use a lot with the video more particularly, um, but I do use them sometimes for photography as well. It just depends. I've just found that the ice lights are um, a bit softer, so they're, they're a nicer type look for portrait work, but I do use my uh, Roto Neolites all the time, yeah. Um, Robert said midnight here in the US Dave and heading to bed um yeah good night mate you yeah, know it's only what is it two o'clock here so it's thanks for watching mate um what else have we got uh three trees photography said the Batis 85 is one of the fastest focusing Sony lenses in low light yeah it's terrific I found the fastest Sony lens to be the 55 that really focuses well the 1.8 it's very quick if I'm in a low light situation and I'm struggling, I'll always pull out the 55. That's very, very fast. But the Batis is good too. Um, what else? Um, Zoom Chris said, I just received the FE 85 1.8. Do you have it already? No, I haven't, um, Zoom Chris, because I've got the Batis. So there's no reason for me to get the FE 85. 
Plus, the only difference really between the two, I've seen the results and they look, to be honest, they look pretty good. That uh, FE85 is, is an amazing lens for its price. If I didn't have the baddest, I probably would get that. But the main thing with the baddest, I suppose, is, it's, um, is the image stabilization that helps too. Uh, if I'm doing handheld video or something like that, that really helps. Even with the um, A6500, which has in-body stabilization, uh, you get better stabilization if it's a stabilized lens as well, and the baddest is, whereas the Sony FE1 isn't. Uh, but for quality, uh, it's from what I've seen, it's really, really good. I should get one in for testing, actually. Um, Zinco said the Ice Light 2 is gorgeous. Yeah, it is. Like I said, I've got three of them, and I, I love the Ice Light. Um, and Zinco said you should try the FE85. Oh, that's to someone else. Yeah, look, if, like I said, if I hadn't got the baddest, um, and I was just out to buy a 85 now, that's the one I'd get. I'd probably get that before the G Master, but that's just me because I don't want that massive bulk on the camera. Uh, the Bokker, I suppose, is still nicer on the G Master. Um, but like I said, my clients don't look at that. Remember, as photographers, I just laugh half of the time when I read a lot of these forums and stuff because we're the only ones that really look at all that stuff. We don't look at the shape of the Bokker. We look at the shape of the Bokker. My wedding clients don't look at the shape of the Bokker. My model uh, clients don't look at the shape of the bokeh, they just look at the image. And it, it, it just cracks me up, to be honest. Um, we, tend to be, <laughs> we tend to be all pixel peepers, and it's, it, it's funny. I don't care so much about that now. Um, I more care about what I give to the client and whether they like the image. Um, Zoom Chris said, I don't do that much video, so for me, the 85 FE is perfect. I have the Goal Master as well, but for location and fast and run and gun, it's great. Yeah, because it's lighter, isn't it? Um, I agree with that. See, if I if I did have the um, the GM eighty five, I mean, I, I'd use that obviously for model shits and stuff. But I reckon if half the time when I was walking around doing things like that, I, I wouldn't be taking it because it's too big. Um, and again, as I've got, as I've got older, I, I just I'm over the saw back and I saw arms and everything that I used to get from lugging all this big Nikon gear around that I used to lug around. It was it's like a life changing experience when you put these small cameras on, on a uh, you know just over your shoulder and you don't even feel them by the end of the day. Uh, it's amazing. I've tried to become more min minimalistic as I've got older, and I, I think that's one of the main things now. I'm really trying to get my kit smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's why I'm loving Prime so much, um, because it, it is, they're so small, they're less intimidating, you can get really pretty close to a bride without, you know, her being a bit knocked back by this massive lens sitting in her face. Um, you get a bit more run and gun because people don't notice you as much, and it, you know, I think it's made a difference to, to how I shoot. Um, Zoom Chris said, the Bokka is a little cat size A shaped. Yeah, and it is. Yeah, I agree. The, uh, the Badass... Uh, is still cat's eye if you look at the the bokeh compared to the gold mar the GM, um, but like I said, do clients care? No, they don't care. And um, I'm telling you, if you if you put if you go out and and put a, an image online, it's amazing. I look at half of the stuff on Facebook, and the the photography is disgusting. And then everyone's raving about them, saying how beautiful they are. It just completely bamboozles me. They don't care how the bokeh looks. Photographers care how the bokeh looks. Clients don't. Um, but that's what I believe. You may you may not quite you know believe that. But um, so John Lambert said, um, just curious on how many batteries on the A7R2 do you go through on a full wedding day shoot? I have four, but wondering if I need more. I tend to I tend to probably do around about three. Um, I take a lot though. Uh, because I'm tending to do now fusion, which is video and um, still photography at the same time, I tend to take a lot. And I'm probably, <laughs> you're going to laugh, but I'm probably taking 15 to 16 batteries with me because it, I just take a big case with everything in and they're just thrown in there. So I can't tell you how many I'd actually go through, but as a guess, I would think it probably would be three that I would go through. Uh, in a day, but look, they're so small. I just keep them in my pocket, and then I'll keep always keep a change one in my pocket, and then when it runs out, I'll just swap it over. It takes two seconds. Um, the people that talk about batteries just make me laugh, really, because um, it's one thing that they, you know they always say from the Nikon on the Canon side, oh, the, you go through batteries like crazy. Well, yes, but you, I tell you what, with the Canon or Nikon, you turn the back screen on and view it the same way that you're using your Sony, and the battery will suck as well. 
um, you remember you, you're viewing a uh, live screen so it is what it is but the batteries are tiny but yeah I'll probably go through um, three of those John per camera I would say but I'm mostly using off-camera batteries so all the video ones now I'm using external batteries and I take out the Sony batteries and run from those so I'm only using that for the whole night and that's that's really made a big difference uh, for me if you look at some of my old videos if you go back through my channel you'll actually see those systems that I'm using um, and it's made a big difference um, Zoom Chris said I do four but not fully. Yeah, I won't let them run right down, sort of 10% to go and I'll change over. Um, Zoomy uh, Photography said, for weddings are you using shoulder bag or belt system? I use a, um, I'm using the belt that goes around your waist. Um, it's the rapid strap, uh, no, it's the spider holster. I'm using that and sometimes I change and use a rapid strap which goes over the top. I like the spider holster because the camera sits on your waist and your hands are free. Uh, that's what I'm mostly using for weddings. Um, I love having them around my waist and plus I'm like a you know, gunslinger. <laughs> um, Zoom Chris has gone to bed. No worries mate, catch you again another time. John Lambert said, that's good to know David, cheers. Um, Jerry, Jeremy Erickson said, I do a lot of video too and when shooting in 4K, I suck through the batteries. I also use the battery grip on my A7R2. I know it defeats the minimalist part, but I like having it. Yeah, I've got battery grips for everything and I don't use them now. I probably should sell them um, because I'm just using now these external batteries and um, I often just put them in my pocket and then leave the cable sort of into the cameras. Uh, or what I'm doing is I'm using elastic bands and I'm taping it to the tripod when I'm doing the video or, ta or using the elastic bands onto a monopod um, and they're lasting me all day. I'm not changing them and they're really good and they're really small and light So plus it also helps with the heating. I've never had an overheating problem using the external batteries um, Three trees photography said Sony batteries are inexpensive too. I charge I change the card every time I change the battery for safety. Yeah, I never change cards um, I'm lucky that look I have got another photographer shooting with me so if anything did ever go wrong um, I, I would have that covered in that I could get away with it so I'm not silly enough to uh, shoot everything with one card um, and not have a backup you'd have to be crazy to do that um, but you could always get the card recovered I mean, I, you pretty much will be certain if you send it off it would cost you money you could get it back but um, I've never had a card fail on me yet but I've always got another photographer shooting near me, often a different angle, but the client would not know any difference if that card failed. Um, but So I never change the card. I, I just keep one, a 128 gigabyte card in the camera, it'll last me the whole day. But everyone's different. I'm sure the next Sony camera, please Sony, bring out one with dual cards. Um, Jeremy said, I just ordered the pig strap. I hope I like it. Yeah, I'm sure you will, I've, I've seen that, it's quite good. Um, Three Truth Photographer said, looking up at the spider holster now. Yeah, the spider holster is great, and they've just released a new one, I think, that's for mirrorless. It's a bit smaller. I had the older one, which was for my big digital SLRs for the Nikons. Um, so it is, it is pretty big, but it's still, it's so good. They just hang on the side, and you just pull the camera off and use it, and your hands can be free. And I've got one on both sides, so I can have two cameras. Um... How can I contact you via email? Um, it's on my, it's on the YouTube side. I think my email's on there. If not, just add me on Facebook. Um, they're all on my, um, if you look on any of the videos on YouTube, it has all my links on there. So you can get through Facebook as well. Um, so is there any other questions you'd like to know? Uh, I know it's getting late, probably a lot of you from overseas, but um, I thought we'd, I thought I'd give this a discussion. It's been good. Um, so I think what we might do is um, I might end it there. Um, if you have any questions, you can just, like I said, contact me, add me in Facebook or, or do those other things. Contact me through um, those email numbers. Um, Atterman said, I sold my A6000, one, pondering whether to buy the A6500 or the A72. Oh, I definitely wouldn't buy the A72. I'd get the A6500 over the A72. I know, it's, I know the A72 is full frame, but... Honestly, the difference, I don't use my A7Ts now. I very rarely use them, I've got two of them. Um, and I'm tending to just use the A6500 and the A7R2 in the weddings. 
and I give the second shooter the A7II's to shoot with. Um, you still will see a difference in depth of field. If depth of field is your real main thing, you still will see a difference with full framers against um, APS-C, but if I was choosing one lens over the other, uh, one camera, I'd be getting the A7, A6500 over the A7 II. Um, what I think too is um, the A7 II will be updated very shortly. It'll go to A7 III. I don't know when, but it'll be fairly soon. So it might even pay to hang on and see what happens in that space. Um, but the A6500 is an amazing camera. I love it. I, I love it to death. So it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, Jeremy said it's 10.15 in here in Idaho. Time for bed. <laughs> no worries, Jeremy. Enjoy your night's sleep, mate. It's been, uh, thanks, for thanks for watching and listening. Um, it's the opposite time zone here in Australia. So, um, one Adamant said thanks. Focusing, Jeremy said focusing on the A6500 is amazing. Yeah, how's it been on this? I, I mean, I, I can't tell. I could look over in the other monitor over there, but um, is it does it seem to be holding or is it sort of, moving in and out I'm not sure usually I'd just put this on manual but I thought I'd just leave it on auto um, I don't know how it's focusing on me and the lights pretty dim in here so um, I've just got the windows closed and it's just using external lighting so um, let me know how the focus is uh, that might be about it is anyone thinking about buying the um, new Zeiss lens I think it's way too expensive what are your thoughts on that one let me know um, two thousand dollars. I think it's about two thousand six hundred dollars Australian for that Zeiss one thirty-five. Um, so most of you are saying the focus looks pretty good. So that's interesting. Uh, I've just got on face detect. So all it is is just on face detect, and it's just doing its own thing. So um, yeah. All right. I think we'll end it there. Um, it's been great talking, guys, and we'll do this again soon. Um, Oh, the STF. Someone's asked about the STF. I'd love to have a play with it. I haven't yet. Um, so I may, but again, it's only a 2.8. But that the, the interesting thing about that lens is it actually says 2.8, but I believe it's around about a 4.6 because of the way the lens is, is built. So it's certainly not going to be any good for low light stuff. Um, so I think the STF lens is, a, is going to be a real specialist lens. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about it. I probably need to play with it, but um, yeah, I'm not sure about whether I'd get that due to the fact that it's so slow. Uh, some people I've seen really like the look of the Bokka, but others um, think it looks a bit fake, so I'm not sure. Um, anyway, everyone, bed, we, uh, everyone I think needs to go to bed. Anyway, guys, we'll end it there, um, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks guys, bye for now.